surprised uh, brother johnny there i think he probably had his song all picked out but i picked a different one and so uh you know when you're a song leader you got to be ready to just lead anything and he did a good job there it took him a second he figured it out and got the right timing and everything good job there and so that was a pop quiz we call it in school and so we just did a pop quiz and johnny he did he passed the quiz there so good job there let's take out our bowl our, our our prayer pages if you need a prayer page Raise your hand, and the ushers will get one out to you. So Brother Wilkerson's an usher even when he's not an usher. Amen? And uh, amen. Let's <clears throat> look there. Uh, be praying for our Bible college students, uh, at least the, the Golden State students. They got, they got finals coming up here in a week. So Estrella, she's already been there, done that, got the T-shirt. She's on break already. And she's, uh, she's mocking the other guys, uh, saying, saying she's done. But uh, uh, let's pray for them that they got uh, finals there. Under Health Needs Church family, uh, please continue to pray for Brother Cable. Got a chance to talk to him this morning. And uh, he sounded a whole lot better than he did uh, the other day when I talked to him. And, um, and he was having a transfusion done this morning. And if all goes well, it, he's thinking that he's going to be out in the next... Uh, couple of days he said he said uh you might even see me on sunday pastor and so well don't push your luck there but uh but uh, that'd be a blessing so just continue to pray for him that uh, everything would uh, would work out well there for that and then uh please pray for miss connie and uh and pretty much after church on on sunday uh, she had some some real serious like some nausea and some other uh, issues and um actually went in so be in prayer for her. her. Her daughter actually contacted us, and I texted her uh, just tonight, and, uh, and 
she's she's such a blessing. She she I won't tell you that she does a lot around here because she doesn't want me to tell you. But uh, um, but she she texted and she said uh, she said Pastor, just just so you know, I might be out of commission for a little bit and just let people know. I said I'm sure we'll handle it okay, Miss Connie. We just want you to get better. And so we thank the Lord for her. And um, then under uh, underneath that one, please pray for Estrella. And uh, mentioned this, and I wasn't sure if I could mention it out, but uh, uh, Estrella has uh, been suffering with migraines for quite a, quite some time now, and uh, she has a tumor that uh, that I didn't knew about before, and uh, it's it's been uh, it's bleeding, and the doctors that would seem alarming to me, but the doctors seem to think it's going to be okay, but she just needs uh, she needs to get an appointment to make sure everything's okay, and so just be in prayer for that. Obviously, that's a scary thing. No matter, uh, you know, and I don't care whether the doctors are saying, "Oh, that's," you know, um, just be in prayer there for that. We definitely don't want anything serious uh, in that. And then, uh, uh, please pray for my mom. And uh, she is on the mend, but uh, uh, she's been down for about about a week and a half now. And so, just be in prayer for her health as well. And then, uh, under uh, other needs, uh, please pray for uh, Miss Adelicia's brother Mario. Uh, for healing and salvation, and um, I believe uh, he was he was beaten up, right? Is that the same guy? Uh, and uh, got beat, beaten up and robbed, as a matter of fact, in Mayo, and uh, so he's recovering there for that. Just pray for his salvation. Is this the same Mario that came to church uh, a couple of weeks ago as well? So, um, and he's he's come to, he's come to church, I, I maybe it was just his first week or so, maybe. I think it was, I think it was, and so... Uh, just be in prayer there uh, for him. And then uh, uh, the Miller family, and I uh, mentioned uh, that last week, and uh, they lost, uh, I believe it was a daughter and a granddaughter, a uh, little, little, little girl. And so just be in prayer there for comfort for that family. And um, uh, right underneath the Miller family, uh, we mentioned Brother Debo had uh, several different uh, prayer requests there. We don't have... Uh, Updates on on some of those prayer requests, but uh, uh, he did mention uh, uh, that uh, a young uh, young lady uh, passed away in Woodland uh, in a tragic accident um, th this week. A very tragic ac accident, uh, and uh, so just be in prayer for that family. We don't know the name or anything, uh, but if you could uh, just maybe pencil that in there. Um, and uh, real real tragedy there. Under uh, cancer prayer requests. Um, please pray for Leah, and uh, this is a prayer request from a, 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 a visitor we had on Sunday, Daniela, and uh, she was a, a, a visitor that we had uh, that came from uh, Brazil, and so uh, she uh, met me at the door, uh, really enjoyed the service, and she said, I, I, I want to put a prayer request on this prayer page. She had one of our prayer pages and was already putting a request on there, and so if you could uh, add that uh, prayer request. And then uh, under health needs, uh, family and friends, um, the uh, Aubin's friend's daughter, uh, Avery Mock, uh, with open heart surgery, and that is tomorrow, right? Or Friday, Friday. And so just be in prayer there for that. And then uh, Estrella's brother, uh, just praying for uh, his health and uh, job situation. Of course, uh, he had had uh, what they think might be some seizures. And uh, so we're praying there that uh, it, it wouldn't be anything major and that uh, it wouldn't affect his job as well. And then um, under that uh, uh, missionary family, uh, Raquel, um, who uh, delivered a, a baby at 30 weeks. And uh, Brother Sucro showed me a picture of the baby. And it looks like a, it looks like a big, big baby but uh, for 30 weeks. But uh, um, the baby is uh, going to be... Uh, in the hospital for uh, several weeks and recovering. And so just be in prayer there uh, for that. And then the Wilkerson's and nephew, Tanner, we mentioned him, and uh, we need to continue to pray there for that. <clears throat> Under uh, uh, our back page there, our student of the week is Caitlin Aubin. Thank the Lord for Caitlin, <laughs> wherever she may be. Is she nursery? She's in nursery. Uh, Caitlin, you are the student of the week. We got a new monitor back in the nursery, and it's mounted, and they say it works. So we'll find out tonight, I guess, if it does. And our staff member of the week, Brother Ely. Thank you, Brother Ely. Our D 
Deacon's uh, wife of the week is Mrs. Aubin. Thank the Lord for Mrs. Aubin. <laughs> Pastor of the week, Pastor Eldred, Gateway Baptist Church in Red Bluff. And he has been there a long time. Thank the Lord for Brother Eldred. And then our missionary of the week is the Owl family. And uh, they are uh, missionaries to a restricted access nation. So we won't mention uh, where. But uh, you can see it on the prayer letter if, you, if you'd like later on. It says, Dear Pastor and Praying Friends, uh, during the month of October, uh, we were so thankful to see four people follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Despite uh, the many restrictions still being placed upon the, Hong Kong, uh, upon the people, God is still uh, working. Uh, people are still being saved and coming to church. We are thankful for our church family who have been still inviting others and going out track passing as well. There have been several new visitors that have come for the first time because they were given a track. On uh, the first Sunday of November, we began an eight-week children's program that emphasized speaking English. Many children signed up and were excited to sing songs, learn Bible stories, play games, and make crafts. Even though the age uh, ranged from uh, three to 10 years old, we pray that God's word will touch their hearts and they will understand how to ask Jesus into their hearts. In addition, we are praying this program will introduce uh, our church uh, to these families and that they would begin uh, attending regularly. Pra uh, praise God for, for our school. Uh, praise God that our school has this unique opportunity of reaching families. Prayer requests. Please continue to pray for things to open up. The government is still pushing uh, vaccinations, even though over 80% of the population has had three shots, requiring a, a vaccine uh, passport to enter the uh, many premises, including churches. Uh, please pray that these restrictions would not hinder people from attending church and being faithful to the Lord. It's vital for the work here, and we are thankful for, for all, uh, all of you. It is also by God's grace that he allows us to be part of his work. Uh, 2023 furlough. We have been on the field for 15 years and know this has uh, been possible only by God's grace and your faithful financial prayer support. We are planning a brief furlough in the spring of uh, 2023. And so just pray there for uh, those traveling uh, uh, needs as well. And so in Christ, uh, the Owl family. And thank the Lord for them. Under new requests, uh, this is uh, Miss Ramona's asking, uh, or it's a praise for Angela Marin. Uh, she has finished the radiation uh, treatment and uh, now we're praying that she would be cancer free and also be saved and so uh, Angela Marin so just pray uh, for that need we're thankful that that uh, that part is over and then uh, also uh, pray uh, for a uh, contact someone in contact named Judy Kitchens this is from Miss Debbie and uh, please pray for Judy's uh, grandson, Zachary Briggs. Um, brain tumor. And so pray for uh, healing there. So Zachary Briggs. And then uh, if you would put down, uh, we have an unspoken for one of our missionary families. And so if we could just pray for that unspoken. All right. Do we miss anybody with a prayer request or a prayer card? Yes, sir. I, I did not. I'm not sure that I, I know him. But oh, okay. And his wife passed away. You said, okay. there in the church as well. I see another hand in the back. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Let's pray for that graduation. He's going to become a southern boy. So pray for that. Oh. Also, uh, just kind of a, maybe a prayer request and just a, kind of an odd thing. Tonight, uh, we, uh, my wife uh, stopped into the Dollar Tree at Davis uh, just for a, a uh, to grab something for Miss Trish. Miss Trish provided our teen meal on her birthday, and so uh, we uh, uh, got her got her some cupcakes, and we had a little 
little birthday party. But uh, she stopped in there, and uh, one of the ladies that worked there, she said, uh, you're Janice, aren't you? And uh, it's kind of like, what did I do? Uh, but uh, it was uh, a, a girl that we, uh, we all went to college with, uh, you know, 20-something years ago, Josina Goodman. And uh, uh, she works in Davis, has been living in Davis, and we just didn't know. And uh, so I just pray that uh, maybe she would uh, come to church and uh, we'd be able to reconnect there. So uh, it's pretty crazy. We said uh, we'll just get the Aubins and the Sukos. Uh, we'll just all go to Dollar Tree and Davis and all invite her at the same time. But uh, we all went to college together. So amen. Anybody else? Yes, sir. We will go ahead and uh, dismiss the King's kids at this time. And let's go to the Lord in prayer.
offering tonight? Caleb, why don't you come and pray for us? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for Caleb for his business offering. And may it see you your church. Please help us to preach what you want to preach in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bibles, please turn to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I'll tell you what, Miss Trish made some kind of sandwiches with hamburger meat and cheese and bacon. And uh, I ate a couple of them. And uh, I was up here and I was like, man, it feels like it's 80 degrees in here. And I went back and I looked and it was only 63. And I was like, man, I'm steaming up. So I didn't shut off the heater. All right, Mrs. Ely, she was looking at me like, uh, you didn't. I did take my jacket off there. So Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6. So if I fall asleep in the sermon, though, blame Miss Trish, all right? Uh, she, made a, she made some good, uh, I guess they're called hobo burgers or something like that. That's how the hobos eat around here, man. I'm going to join them next time. But Hebrews chapter 6, and look at verse number 17, Hebrews 6. Verse 17, the Bible says, Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, uh, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which uh, entereth into that uh, within the veil. And uh, I like those verses. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 6 for a little bit. Uh, I like the fact that it said that uh, God who's uh, immutable, he doesn't change. He doesn't change. And uh, it says, uh, by these things, the immutability of his counsel, uh, what he has decided about salvation is what's going to be. And I like what it says there, God who cannot lie. You know, when he says, uh, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved, he doesn't lie about that. He doesn't lie about that. And I, and I like that. Tonight, we're going to look at some more. Last week, we started on just some verses that uh, sometimes people look at and they, they may think, uh, oh, this might teach uh, you can lose your salvation. And uh, last week, we looked at a couple of ideas uh, uh, the idea of, well, if I stop uh, believing or if I don't believe enough, uh, could I lose my salvation? We looked at that last week. We looked at the phrase, uh, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And uh, we looked at that phrase and we saw that uh, uh, th th those things do not mean that you can lose your salvation. We'll look at some more phrases tonight. And uh, I think it's important. We started, first of all, by telling you uh, all the different verses that teach you cannot lose your salvation. And I think that's important. Understand there's hundreds of probably thousands of verses that teach you cannot lose your salvation. And uh, we're going to look at just a couple where sometimes people will cherry pick it uh, out of context or they'll misunderstand the verse. And, uh, and, and so we're going to look at that uh, tonight. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you bless tonight. I pray that you would uh, uh, help, uh, help me to be clear in these, uh, these verses. I pray, 
Lord, that maybe tonight uh, uh, this might be a blessing to some people. Maybe, maybe some thoughts that uh, uh, you, you've had in the past. And Lord, I just pray that uh, uh, that you would help uh, tonight to be profitable. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's look at Hebrews chapter six, verse number four. Uh, four through six is sometimes uh, uh, verses that people will use and say, uh, "This looks like you can." lose your salvation and the term they use is you fall from grace can you fall from grace uh, notice uh, verse number four the bible says for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the holy ghost and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucified in themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. I remember the first time that I came across that, I told you my testimony about these things uh, a little bit last week. When I was in ninth grade, uh, I got a, a, a Bible teacher. His name was Mr. Hall, and he was a free will Baptist. Free will Baptists believe you can lose your salvation. I didn't know that at the time. And uh, I thought all Baptists were like me, you know, once saved, always saved. And I didn't realize that there was uh, a segment, actually, that believes you can lose your salvation along with a lot of, a lot of other de denominations. That year, I began uh, going back and forth with uh, the, my teacher, uh, talking about the subject of can you lose your salvation. It's amazing when you start uh, talking about that, how many other people you find. And there were a couple of guys in my class, uh, uh, they were from uh, the Wesleyan type uh, church, the Methodist kind of uh, churches, which also tend to believe you can lose your salvation. And uh, we started also talking about this and and uh, uh, back in those days, I was a little bit argumentative. Uh, not much has changed, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, we, we, we chatted nicely, but we, we talked about these things. Uh, the funny thing is, is I remember specifically reading this set of verses, and uh, we, it was kind of like uh, I would give them verses, which they generally never answered, but uh, they would give me verses, and I'd work really hard to find out what, uh, what they believe about this. This set of verses, I actually found. They didn't give it to me. I found it, and at first it made me kind of nervous. I looked at it and said, wow, that uh, fall from grace. What does that mean, you know, to, to fall from grace? And uh, I came up at that time with a, a, a thought of what I thought maybe it meant. And I had to admit, going in, I was a little bit unsure of myself. You ever been there before where you're kind of bluffing maybe just a little bit, you know, like, uh, I think this is what it means, but I really hope they don't press me on it because I'm not feeling really confident about it. Uh, the funny thing is when I brought up the verse to these guys, they got extremely nervous. And I kind of thought for a second, I thought, uh, man, I thought I was going to be nervous on this. These guys are really kind of nervous about this verse. And... Uh, when, uh, when I read it and, and started to kind of explain why I believed it didn't uh, mean that you could lose your salvation, by the way they responded, I realized why they were nervous. Understand that uh, if this verse means that you could lose your salvation, this verse also means you can never be saved again. Notice what it says, for it is impossible... For those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, uh, the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Uh, they were getting pretty nervous because they were like, I don't know how to answer this. If, uh, if we fall away, we can't get saved again. And it was kind of funny to see that I was nervous about something I didn't need to be nervous about. But I say that sometimes when you fall, when you, you come across verses like this, uh, and there's other verses, uh, could I say that first of all, don't be so quick to throw out what you believe. Just because you find one verse that seems to maybe uh, not jive with exactly what you believe. Uh, never, never throw out what you believe uh, based on many verses just off of a vague verse. By the way, I believe you ought to learn what the vague verse means. I don't mean throw out the vague verse. Uh, but uh, uh, don't just say, well, uh, oh man, there's a verse that I, I, I don't understand, I can't explain, so uh, that must mean I'm a, I lose my eternal salvation. All right, uh, don't, don't throw out what, you, uh, what you've learned based off of so much. 
off of something that maybe you don't understand. Now let's look at this verse, and I'm going to give you two different ideas on this verse. And uh, honestly, uh, either one I think uh, could could explain this uh, quite well. Uh, but uh, and you and you can honestly decide uh, uh, which way you think it is. But I can tell you this: what it doesn't mean is you can lose your salvation. It doesn't mean that. Uh, I, I will tell you what I uh, there, there's two two possibilities I think uh, on this verse. But you know, once again. If it means you lose your salvation, it means that uh, once a person loses their salvation, they can never be saved again. That's what that verse would mean, if that's what it means. I don't think that's what it means, but uh, if that's what it means, then that's, uh, that would be uh, pretty harsh there. Uh, notice, uh, first of all, the idea uh, being that, uh, uh, I, and this is, this is generally what I've thought this to mean, uh, although I could see the other, uh, other way as possible. Uh, I tend to believe that this uh, is somebody who comes up basically to the point of salvation and then finally decides, I'm not going to get saved. Uh, think about this. Look at verse number four. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, somebody that uh, hears the gospel, understands it, all right, uh, and have tasted of the heavenly gift. They've seen God working in their life. They've seen uh, things happening in their life and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been working in their heart and life. They see the evidence of that, that he's been doing something in, in their life. Verse number five, and have tasted of the good word of God. They see that the Bible works. They see what the Bible says. They understand what it says uh, and the powers of the world to come. And then it says, if they should fall, shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to open shame. Uh, this idea being, uh, let's just say that, uh, uh, that uh, I, I was in love, and I wasn't married. And, uh, and I saw the love of my life, and she was up on the tower looking out the window. And I said, I'm coming to get you, my dear lovely grace and I put the ladder up against the wall and I start climbing the ladder I get all the way up and then her dad comes and pushes the ladder out I have fallen from grace all right uh, uh, did I ever have her no I got close but I never had her uh, you know uh, here uh, you see where a person uh, could uh, uh, understand the gospel see God working, uh, have God uh, burning their heart, have God uh, uh, doing some pretty amazing things in their life, and uh, finally they say, you know what, uh, I'm not getting saved. Now, uh, in verse number 6, uh, look, if, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Uh, uh, you know, if, if a person gets that close, and they finally say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not getting saved. It's not that they couldn't get saved. It's just they're not going to. It's almost the same idea as Romans chapter 1, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit similar, where uh, a person uh, uh, falls into such sin that they uh, finally, at some point, just it's not that God wouldn't save them. Uh, it's just that they, they just will not get saved. They just choose not to get saved. Uh, uh, what do they do? Uh, they, they, they don't renew again to repentance. Uh, they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, putting them into open shame. Uh, uh, they, they, they couldn't get back to that spot again. Not to that spot where the Holy Spirit is uh, convicting their heart. Not to that spot where the Holy Spirit has been working in, in, in their life. Uh, what have they done? They've fallen away from grace. They never had it. They never had it. Uh, there is another thought on this verse, and I'll give you this. And honestly, I, I think both of these could be ideas. Well, once again, uh, you know, I was talking to Brother Ryan uh, just earlier, and uh, we said sometimes, uh, you know, we, uh, we stress about uh, exactly, you know, uh, you know, not knowing everything that the Bible says. And the truth is, is we ought to always be trying to learn what the Bible says. Uh, sometimes we might look at something, and, and by the way, we might look at something a little bit differently. And uh, that's okay. Uh, when you get to heaven, you realize that I was right and you were wrong. And no, I'm just kidding, all right? Uh, uh, someday you'll uh, uh, get to heaven and we'll all realize we didn't know everything that we thought we knew. But, uh, but the truth is, is some of these uh, you could look at a different way. 
Uh, here's another thought. Uh, notice in verse number 6, it says, If they shall fall away. Uh, and uh, some people believe this, uh, this verse deals with the idea of if a person uh, gets saved, uh, that the that the uh, uh, the writer here is saying uh, this is an absurdity to think that it's possible a person could fall away, uh, a person who uh, has been enlightened, a person who has had the Holy Spirit working in their lives, a person that's tasted of the heavenly gift, a person that has the uh, taste of the Word of God and the goodness of the Word of God. How absurd would it be to fall away if they could fall away? They wouldn't be able to renew themselves because they would be uh, be shaming Christ. They'd be putting him to an open shame. Uh, the absurdity idea uh, is found in other places in Scripture. Uh, hold your spot uh, here and turn to, actually you don't have to hold your spot there. Turn to 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And honestly, I, I, I you know... I fight between uh, which way, way I think that verse goes there. Uh, but here is another example, you might say, of where, uh, as, and here the Apostle Paul really gives the idea of this would be an absurd thing to think. Now, it's on a different subject, uh, but, but I'll give you what the subject is. Look at, uh, this is another kind of one of those weird verses that sometimes people are like, why is that verse in here? Look at 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15 verse 29 it says else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead uh, <laughs> there's actually religions out there that baptize people for dead people uh, yes all right uh, and, because they believe that baptism is part of salvation and they believe uh, baptism makes them part of their church they literally will go back through uh, uh, genealogical records and uh, they will have a person get in their baptistry, and they'll say, uh, I am being baptized for George Washington. I'm being uh, baptized for, uh, uh, you know, William Penn. I'm being baptized for, and all the greats have already been baptized, all right? Uh, uh, and, and they will have somebody, by proxy, be baptized, so that all the founding fathers and everybody, uh, anybody important, is part of their church. They are baptizing for the dead. And here is the verse that's used for that. Now, first of all, you can't be baptized for anybody but yourself, all right? Uh, but that's not what it's talking about. A person can't be baptized for somebody else, and, and you're not baptizing for dead people. Notice in this, uh, this chapter, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which uh, ye all, also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. And by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory uh, what I preached unto you, unless uh, ye believed in, in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, how that, Christ, uh, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Uh, so you see here, Paul in this chapter is talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now notice uh, the idea that he's fighting. Uh, look, uh, look at verse number uh, 13 but um, or verse 12 now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead uh, what is he arguing here for the resurrection of the dead and he's saying there are people in this church that are preaching there is no resurrection for the dead by the way the Sadducees believe that there was no resurrection uh, notice verse 13 but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also in vain. Uh, what's he saying? Look, if Jesus Christ didn't raise from the dead, then why are we preaching? What good is the gospel? I mean, uh, you know, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. If Christ couldn't beat death, how do you think you're going to beat death? By believing in Christ. Uh, it's an absurd idea to not believe in the resurrection of the dead, but try to believe in the gospel. You have to believe in the resurrection in order to believe in the gospel, uh, because it wouldn't make sense otherwise. And uh, we won't go through the whole passage, but why do we get baptized? 
Because we believe that Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and rose again. If Jesus Christ didn't resurrect from the dead, why are we being baptized for a dead person? That's what that verse means. Why would I be, be symbolically representing the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ if Jesus Christ didn't resurrect? It would be an absurd thing. It'd be absurd to say, I'm getting, I'm getting baptized for somebody, symbolically, who resurrected, but he didn't resurrect. That's an absurdity. And so uh, you see that idea there in the passage. Uh, once again, the Hebrews passage, what it definitely teaches is you can't fall from grace. You can't fall from grace, as in salvation. Um, you, can get, uh, uh, you can get close to salvation and reject it. And when you get close and reject it, the likelihood of you coming back and getting saved is very unlikely. Let's look at this uh, idea again. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. This uses the same terminology, but I, I think for a different reason here. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. The Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, uh, I, Paul, uh, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Well, once again, that, that term fallen from grace is there. Uh, is he saying that, uh, that you lose your salvation? That's not what he's saying here. Let's see what he's saying in this passage. First of all, let's see who he's writing it to. Look back at Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle, verse 1, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. So he's writing to a group of churches in the area of Galatia. And these churches all have one common problem. The idea that uh, a person gets saved by doing the Mosaic Law has crept into their churches. Uh, notice, uh, look at verse number 6. He says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Uh, what's he saying? Uh, we taught you the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection. We taught you salvation by grace through faith. And he says, you have fallen away from that idea. You've fallen away from that teaching. What, what did they fall into? Look at chapter 2, verse 16. And I wish we could go through the whole book, but we just got to skip around for sake of time. Look at verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. What is he saying? You can't get saved by doing the law. The law of Moses, the, the Bible, you can't get saved by following the, uh, uh, all the commandments in the Bible. You can't get saved that way. You get saved by faith. Uh, he goes on to say, but if, while we seek uh, to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law. That I may live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith. The faith of who? Your faith? Oh, no, the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Notice verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, 
then Christ is dead in vain. Uh, he says, look, uh, uh, you, you frustrate the grace of God when you try to say that you've got to be good to go to heaven. Uh, you, you are falling from grace. You're not losing salvation, but you're losing the very gospel that's taught. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. It is salvation by grace through faith without the deeds of the law. And if you start adding the deeds to the law, you have fallen away from the idea of grace. Uh, I think of Romans chapter 11, verse 4. It says, if it be of grace, it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And if it be of a grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, work is no more work. Uh, you can't have them both ways. If you have a mixture, it's works. It can't be both ways. Uh, look, at, uh, look at chapter 3, verse 24. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Uh, what does the law do? It shows me that I'm a sinner. It's not there to, uh, to, for me to try to perform up to so that I can be good enough to go to heaven. Uh, nobody can perform all the, the commandments of, of the Bible. Nobody's good enough. Uh, what does it do? It shows me that I'm bad. That's what it shows me. When I read the Bible, it shows me where I, where I falter. It shows me where I'm a sinner. And you know what? Uh, when it convicts me and shows me I'm a sinner, it gets me ready for salvation. I like uh, uh, the, uh, I believe it was Lester Olaf, I think, that preached the sermon. Uh, he, he preached the sermon, uh, Dr. Law and Dr. Grace. Fantastic sermon. You ever get a chance to hear it? He said, uh, Dr. Law. Uh, he says, uh, uh, you, you go and you, you say, uh, uh, Dr. Law, I've got a problem, you know, I, uh, I don't know what it is. And Dr. Law puts you on the, the table and he looks at you and he says, uh, you got a sin problem. Oh, help me, Dr. Law, help me. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I only diagnose. I can't operate. But I'll turn you over to my partner, Dr. Grace. Dr. Grace can do the operation. Dr. Grace can fix your problem. Dr. Law only diagnoses. Dr. Grace is what fixes the problem. That's a fantastic sermon. I wish I'd have thought about it before him. But uh, uh, anyway, he, out, he, he was born before me. So anyway, but I'll, I'll steal it one of these days and not tell you about it, right? Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's, uh, let's look at another, another thought here. We'll, we'll look at a short thought here. Uh, look at uh, Galatians chapter 5. You're right there. Here's another phrase that sometimes people will use uh, to try to say maybe you can lose your salvation. Uh, something to the effect of the wicked cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Look at Galatians chapter 5. You'll see this idea in here. Look at verse number 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are, uh, are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, revelings, murders, drunkenness, rev uh, revelings, uh, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, and the idea being there, if you do those kind of things, you lose your salvation. All right? Now, first of all, we ought to probably look at the list. Because I think we've probably all done some of those things. All right? Now, maybe, maybe you've not committed murder. That's a good thing. All right? Uh, maybe you've not committed adultery or, or something like that. Um, you know that word variant? had a dispute with somebody you just lost your salvation man Sue Cook, why are you guys laughing all right i think they both just lost their salvation there i don't know all right Some nudging going on here or something i don't know emulations if you look that word up it means rivalry all the teenagers just lost their salvation all right uh, rivalry Wrath. 
Everybody that has a driver's license just lost their salvation, all right? Strife. You know, that, you know, we look at it and say, well, you know, of course the murderers and the adulterers and the fornicators, of course they lose their salvation. You better look at the list, though. Uh, let me give you another list here. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Now, maybe you're like uh, the rich young ruler and said, uh, Lord, I have followed all the commandments from my youth onward, and uh, I've not done any of these things. Well, then uh, let's see how you compare it to Revelation chapter 21. Look at verse number 8. <clears throat> but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters. You're like, whew, uh, so, so far so good, right? And all liars. I haven't done any of these. You just lost your salvation, all right? Uh, all liars shall have their part in the lake which, uh, which burneth with fire and brimstone to the second death. Uh, are these verses teaching that if you, uh, if you break uh, one of these laws that you lose your salvation? Now, back in the Galatians passage, it's interesting that uh, uh, you have a list of bad things. But notice uh, Galatians 5, look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Notice that last verse seems to tell me that I could have a problem. Well, what is it teaching? It's not teaching that if I break some of these laws, I'm going to lose my salvation. What it's teaching me is I'm not living like a Christian if I do these things. Uh, in fact, if you read the whole passage, it says, uh, Walk in the Spirit. You should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. You get the idea. If you do the one, you're, you're probably not going to do the other. Uh, and, and so the idea is that... Uh, you, you should not only be a Christian, you ought to live like a Christian. Uh, let's look at this idea again. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And I think it's important to compare these different scriptures to say, you know, I, is that really what, what, what it says there? Look at uh, Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, look with me at verse number 3. The Bible says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. All right, now think about that again. Is it saying that if it was once named among you that you've lost your salvation? He's saying it shouldn't be named among you. Look at this, verse 4. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Oh, I could point out a few folks that probably lose their salvation over that if that's the case. Or nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this ye, know, uh, this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. There's our phrase. Look at verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon who? The children of disobedience. What's he saying? He's saying, look, uh, these are the reasons that God puts his wrath on unbelievers. These things. But notice what it says in verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit, oh, look at this, the fruit of the Spirit again, of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Uh, what's the point there? Uh, don't, don't be a Christian and not live like a Christian. Uh, act like a Christian. Live like a Christian. It's not giving me a list of sins that says if you break these sins, you lose your salvation. What it's saying is these are sins that, uh, uh, that God punishes wicked people for. Don't be partakers with them. Don't live like them. Uh, don't, don't be judged uh, you know, for things that unsaved people be judged for. 
Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll give you one more of these. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll give you one more of these. We'll call it a night. I didn't get to the one that I really wanted to get to, but I'm not going to rush it. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> Look at verse number 9. I love this set of verses. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There's our phrase. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor uh, adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Well, that's pretty powerful there, isn't it? Look at verse 11. And such, what's the next word? Were some of you. By the way, sometimes people say, uh, well, uh, you know, Pastor, do you think it's possible for a person who sinned like this to go to heaven? And such were some of you. You know, the Apostle Paul was a murderer. He became the, you know, one of the greatest apostles that there was. Uh, uh, God can save to the uttermost. He sure can. And such were some of you. But look at this. But ye, what's that next word? Are. Do you notice the difference between past tense and present tense? That's what you were, but that's not what you are. You used to be this. But now you're this. Notice, uh, uh, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And we talked about some of those words already. You're washed. Uh, the Lord has forgiven you of how many of your sins? All of your sins. Does he know all the past sins? He does. Does he know all today's sins? He does. Does he know all of tomorrow's sins? He does. What has he forgiven you from? All your sins. You're washed. Notice, you're sanctified. That word sanctified means you're set apart. What has he done? He set you apart to, uh, to go to heaven. He set you apart. Uh, ye are sanctified. Ye are justified. We talked about that. Uh, we've said that word, uh, just as if I'd never sinned. What does God do? He declares you righteous declares you righteous. Am I still a sinner? Absolutely. Uh, but I'm not that anymore. By the way, could I say that uh, uh, we do struggle with sins, but you know what? If you're, you're here tonight and you say, uh, boy, pastor, I have just, I have a sin that is just, uh, just caused me grief. I feel like I, it's beat me. I feel like I can't win. I feel like I can't get past it. Uh, no, that's what you devil tries to convince you is that that's what you are. That's not what you are. That's what you were. You say, well, I, I still struggle with it. No, uh, that, that, that's what you were, but you don't have to be that. The Bible tells me in the book of Romans chapter 6 that uh, I don't have to be the servant of sin. Now, I, 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 can let, uh, I, can, I can yield my members to sin, and I can definitely serve sin, but I don't have to be. I don't have to be. I'm washed. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. Uh, the devil tries to get you to think that what you were in the past is what you are today and what you will always be. That's just not true. Uh, tonight, you ought to call him a liar and say, you know what? Uh, I don't have to be this devil. Uh, I, I'm going to seek the Lord, and I'm going to by the way, if it's a real struggle, you might you might consider going to RU and, and get some some people that will pray with you and help you uh, uh, hold you accountable and uh, help you beat that thing. Because you don't have to. You don't have to uh, be shackled in, in sin forever. Uh, you, you don't have to be a servant to sin. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you that salvation is free. I'm thankful that, uh, as we read this uh, tonight, that, it, it, that it's an anchor to our soul, both sure and steadfast. It's a strong consolation for us. 
I'm thankful that I don't have to worry about whether I'm going to go to heaven or not. I'm thankful that you, you, you gave me something that could be sure. And Lord, I pray that you would help, uh, help us tonight. I, I pray that you'd help us to pass that, uh, that truth about salvation on to others. And Lord, I, I pray tonight as well as, as I know that uh, uh, we, we, we do struggle with sin. And Lord, in, in some cases, uh, sometimes we, we struggle very hard against sin. I pray that you would be with the discouraged tonight. I pray that you'd be with the, the, the depressed tonight. I pray that you'd be with the one that uh, uh, feels maybe a little worthless as a result of sin. I pray that tonight you'd give some hope, that you'd, you'd help them to realize that uh, they don't have to be what the devil's trying to tell them they are. They don't have to be that. Lord, I, I pray that you'd help them to see uh, the truth, that, uh, uh, that, that they don't have to serve sin, that you, you can break the bonds of sin. You can break the chains. And Lord, I pray that we would live in victory. Bless each person here tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Thank you.